Greg LeBlanc, and I'm here at the Haas School of Business with Anand Chandrasekhar, who is the Senior Vice President for Qualcomm uh, Data Center. Perfect. Welcome, Anand. Thank you. Glad to be here, Greg. So I think everyone understands that the future is going to be dramatically affected by the rapid increase in computational power and uh, the rapid increase in the amount of data that companies are generating and analyzing. Um, and all this data needs to be processed uh, somewhere out there. And um, we see a lot of computation taking place in the cloud, but we also see quite a bit of computation taking place uh, on the edges. Um, for a company like Qualcomm, how important is it that you have a presence in all of these different locations uh, where computation is taking place? So I think your observation is correct. With the increasing uh, amounts of data being generated by devices in the edge, uh, increasingly so, a lot of which gets thrown back to servers and data centers of some form, right? Um, the need for having computing at the edge will increase dramatically over time. Even more than that, there will be a need for computing at the edge itself, right? So what do I mean by that? If you look at cars uh, and autonomous driving, right? Cars will eventually have a server in the car for doing local processing, real-time processing, and serving that information back up to all of the various sensors that are in the car. Today, that's not the case. You don't have a server in the car. But that will be the case when you have autonomous driving for a variety of reasons, not least to be able to process traffic flows and so on and so forth. And you don't want the, that information pinging to a server that's someplace else and coming back. Rather, you want a lot of that being done locally uh, or local processing. So that'll certainly happen, and that will increase the need for having uh, computation at the edges. Right? Yeah, but are the same attributes uh, for success in the server space, um, are they the same as the attributes for success uh, around the edge? Or why, why does a company need to be present in all of the different... So locations? the dynamics will change where the, the attributes um, in the edge, for example, will be much more dependent on power. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, security will be a lot more important than the edge. Uh, so if you think about each one of the endpoints that are arising in today's uh, day and age, every one of those endpoints, particularly in the industrial sort of embedded environment, every one of those endpoints is connected to a corporate network of some fashion. Those endpoints, if they're not secure, those endpoints are effectively the least secure, hackable entry point into a corporate mm -hmm. network. So security will be important, right? Uh, not only computing. Computing is necessary for processing on the edge. So when you, when you combine those two, now you have something that's reasonable and meaningful. But at the same time, if the power isn't there, then you can't actually put it embedded into an endpoint because you're going to blow out the characteristics of the device. So the dynamics of what the requirements are in the edges are going to be very different over than what the dynamics are in a data center environment. But the need for computing from uh, one end of the spectrum to the other end of the spectrum will not be limited. It will continue to increase over time. But other things will also be added to it. And all these devices need to be able to talk to one another. Absolutely. So it starts and ends with communication as well, mm -hmm. right? Because if the devices have the compute capability uh, but aren't, don't have the com uh, communications capability, then effectively they're, they're irrelevant. Uh, they're a standalone mm -hmm. data point that's throwing out data, but nobody is actually seeing what mm -hmm. they're throwing out, and they're useless. So that communications has to be built in from the, from the start. Now, companies that you've been associated with, like Intel and Qualcomm, uh, these are companies that traditionally make equipment, that make communication devices, that have software embedded in, these, uh, in, these, in this equipment. Um, but traditionally, analytics has not been a big part of either one of these companies' yep. uh, businesses. Do you see uh, Qualcomm and potentially Intel getting deeper into uh, providing analytics services to their customers, or will that always be something that's um, provided separately? So when you say analytics, uh, assuming you mean the solutions that get utilized for analytics, um, yes, we do provide those, for example, on the uh, smartphone side and on the device side. Uh, we've had an investment underway for quite a few years uh, based off of our work in designing neuromorphic processors. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you mean analytics as in the software that uh, mm -hmm. uh, does the framework uh, for those, we have some of that on the phone environment, but from a broader sense, uh, whether it's an AI framework a la Google's TensorFlow or other things uh, that are out there, typically we don't venture into that. I think there are others that have uh, more of a co-competency in those areas. And uh, you've spoken about what it's like to be a round-earth thinker as opposed to a flat-earth thinker. Yeah. I wonder if you could just say a few comments to uh, people. I think that it's something that's very consistent with what we uh, believe here at the Haas School with question the status quo. 
So my, my comment about the, uh, in your class today about the flat earth versus the round earth thinking is I think uh, too often in corporate environments, uh, particularly in corporate environments that have been extraordinarily successful at uh, their business already, uh, there is a phenomenon of not invented here or this way has always worked. And uh, I counter that by, um, and I think that sort of thinking has to be countered because that's how companies themselves will move forward. And that move forward will not happen without individuals questioning the status quo and coming up with something that's a lot more constructive, that's well thought through, that moves the ball forward. So I call that form of thinking that questions the status quo, rounder thinking, as opposed to flatter thinking. And that's what I was referring to today. Anand, thanks for coming in. Thank you, Greg. Pleasure to be here. Thank mm -hmm. you.